Hi, Matthew here. I'm going to talk you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. It's challenging, but hopefully with my help, you'll be able to understand and answer the question. So let's get started. Question six, which is a 30 mark question on calculus. So question six, part eight, which is worth 10 marks, wants us to evaluate the integral from zero to pi over six of sine four x cos two x dx. However, we have a problem here and that's that we have sine four x multiplied by cos two x. So you can't integrate two terms that are multiplied by each other in integration if they both have the variable and here they both have an x. So we're gonna to have to sort that out. And to do that, we're gonna look at page 15 of our formula and tables book to rewrite sine four x cos two x as two separate terms that aren't multiplied by each other. So we have sine 4x cos 2x, which is going to be this formula right here. Now we don't have 2 sine 4x cos 2x, so we're going to have to half the answer we get. So we're going to do sine of 4x plus 2x plus sine of 4x minus 2x and then half that answer. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. So as I said, it's going to be half times by sine 4x plus 2x plus sine 4x minus 2x. So that's equal to half sine 6x plus sine 2x. So now that's what we're going to integrate. So that gives us the integral from zero to pi over six of a half times by sine 6x plus sine 2x. Now half is a constant, so we can take that outside the integral, which gives us half times by the integral from zero to pi over six of sine 6x plus sine 2x. And now let's look at page 26 of our formula and tables book to find out how to integrate a trigonometric ratio such as sine. So it's the second last one on the table on the left hand side there. So sine x, the integral of that is going to be minus cos of x. However, if you have sine ax, which is a constant before the x as we do, that's going to go to minus 1 over a cos of a of x. So now let's use this rule to integrate both of our terms. So the half just stays outside whatever answer we get in the integral. So we're integrating sine 6x first. So the a is the 6 and obviously the x is the x. So that's going to go to minus 1 over 6 cos 6x. And we're going to add with that minus 1 over 2 cos 2x. And we're evaluating that from 0 to pi over 6. So now I have to put in pi over 6 for x and 0 for x and take them away from each other and then half the answer I get, which should give me the solution. So that gives me a half times the minus 1 over 6 cos 6 pi over 6 minus a half times by cos 2 pi over 6. And then minus from that is minus 1 over 6 cos 6 times by 0 minus a half times by cos of 2 times by 0. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out what cos 6 pi over 6 is, cos 2 pi over 6 is, cos 6 times by 0 is, and cos 2 times by 0 is. So We'll start with cos 6 pi over 6. So cos 6 pi over 6 is equal to minus 1. And then we'll try cos 2 pi over 6. And that's equal to a half. And now cos 6 times by 0, which is just cos of 0, which is 1. And then cos of 2 times by 0 is just the same thing as cos of 0. And as we just worked out, that's equal to 1. So now I'm going to rewrite that as half outside of minus 1 over 6 times by minus 1 minus a half times by a half. So that's our first bracket. And minus from that is going to be our second bracket, which is minus 1 over 6 times by 1 and minus a half times by 1. So let's evaluate both the brackets now. So again, just on the outside, we have half. And then on the inside in the first bracket, we have minus 1 over 6 times by minus 1, which is just going to be plus 1 over 6 and then a half by a half is 1 over 4 but we have the minus there so it's minus 1 over 4 then minus from that is going to be minus 1 over 6 times by 1 which is just going to be minus 1 over 6 and then minus a half by 1 it's just going to be minus a half so now we're in the final steps here so we're just going to do half on the outside again and then 1 over 6 minus 1 over 4 is minus 1 over 12 and then minus from that is going to be minus 1 over 6 minus a half and minus 1 over 6 minus a half is minus 4 over 6 so that's the same thing as half times by minus 1 over 12 plus 4 over 6 and now let's pop this into the calculator to work out what it is. So a half outside of minus 1 over 12 plus 4 over 6. And the answer is 7 over 24. So that's our answer there for part A of the question, 7 over 24. So now let's move on to part B and B part 1 is worth 10 marks as well. So here we're given that y is equal to ln of the square root of 5x over x minus 2. And then we've defined dy dx, which is just the same thing as the derivative of y with respect to x. So to make this a bit easier for us, we're going to rewrite the logarithm. So we're going to use the rules of the logarithms in our formula and tables book. So here they are on page 21. So we have ln of a fraction. So going by the second rule here, ln of a fraction is going to be ln of the number on top minus ln of the number on the bottom. So we're going to use this now to make the question slightly simpler for us. So we had y is equal to ln of the square root of 5x over x minus 2. So now using that rule, we can now write y is equal to ln of the square root of 5x minus ln of the square root of x minus 2. 
Now we can make it even simpler for us again. So remember that the square root of x is equal to x to the power of a half. And this again is on page 21 of your formula and tables book. That means that we can write y is equal to ln of 5x to the power of a half minus ln of x minus 2 to the power of a half. Now there's one more thing we can do to make this simple for us and then we can differentiate the two different terms. So we are going to look at page 21 of our formula and tables book again and we're going to look at this third formula down in the middle column. So this formula says that if you have the log of some number x to the power of some number q that's the same thing as q times by log of the number x. So in our case we had ln of 5x to the power of a half. So using the third rule down there, we can say that that's equal to a half times by ln of 5x. And following off from that, we can say that ln of x minus 2 to the power of a half is equal to a half times by ln of x minus 2. So we're going to rewrite our expression with both of these terms, which would make it easy to differentiate for us. So now we have y is equal to a half times by ln 5x minus a half ln x minus 2. And now we can differentiate here. So we can go to our formula tables book on page 25 to find out how to differentiate ln. So it's the second formula down there in the table on the left hand side of the page that says that ln of x goes to 1 over x however what it's not saying is that if you have ln of a of x for example that goes to 1 over a of x times by a so you have to differentiate whatever is in here and then multiply that by the 1 over whatever is in that pink circle there as well so I'm going to show you now how to do this for or terms so now we're ready to differentiate and we're going to use the rule that I just showed you there and how to differentiate logarithms so that means that dy dx is equal to a half times by the derivative of ln of 5x so that's going to be 1 over 5x times by the derivative of 5x, which is obviously just going to be 5. So that's the derivative of the first term. Now minus from that is going to be a half times by 1 over x minus 2 times by the derivative of x minus 2, which is just going to be 1. So now I can multiply these out and expand to get my answer for dy dx. So a half times by 1 over 5x times by 5. So both of the 5s will cancel, which leaves me with 1 over 2x. And then minus from that is going to be a half times by 1 over x minus 2, which is minus 1 over 2x minus 4. And that's your answer. dy dx is equal to 1 over 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 4. You can simplify this down further and write it as one single fraction. However, you will get full marks for that. So that's your answer for b part 1. And now we're going to look at the final part of the question, b part 2. And this is also worth 10 marks. So we're told that a particle along the curve y is equal to ln of the square root of 5x over x minus 2 in such a way that the x coordinate is increasing at a constant rate of 0.4 units per second. Second. So now we've defined the rate at which the y coordinate of the particle is increasing at the instant when x is equal to 2.5. So this is a rate to change question. It's worded slightly tricky. Normally they're not worded as tricky as this, but we can work it out nevertheless. So we have dx dt. So that's this 0.4 units per second. So when you see units per second, we know that the units are in terms of x and seconds is obviously time. That means that that's units with respect to time. So dx dt and that's equal to 0.4. And we have to find the rate at which the y coordinate of the particle is increasing. That's going to be dy dt. And that's what we have to work out. So now we're going to use the chain rule now to work out dy dt. So dy dt is going to be equal to dy over something multiplied by something over dt. Now we have dx dt, so we can put dx in here. And then dx must also go down here. So we already know that dx dt is 0.4. It's given to us in the question. And we've worked out dy dx from the previous question. So again, dy dx is going to be 1 over 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 4. So now we can multiply this out and we get 0.4 over 2x minus 0.4 over 2x minus 4. But remember we have to put x equal to 2.5 which gives me 0.4 over 2 by 2.5 minus 0.4 over 2 by 2.5 minus 4. So 2 by 2.5 is 5, so that's 0.4 over 5 minus 0.4 over 5 minus 1, which is the same thing as 0.4 over 1. So now we can pop this into the calculator to work this out. So we get 0.4 over 5 minus 0.4 over 1, which is the same thing as just 0.4. And the answer for that is minus 8 over 25 or minus 0.32. So it's minus 0.32 units per second. So it's increasing at a rate of minus 0.32 units per second. In other words, it's decreasing at a rate of 0.32 units per second. So that's our answer for B part 2, which is the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.